we're talking movies, and no, not just the ones Kirsten hasn't seen. Northland Films filmmaker and director of Hockeyland, Tommy Haynes, joins us to discuss his latest flick, All About Hockey on the Iron Range. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Talk North, Grain Belt, Royal Credit Union, and Peak Vestibular Center. This is Season 4, Episode 141. Get geared up for the hockey season with SodaStick.com. They've got all your favorite player tees from Marc-Andre Fleury to Matt Zuccarello to Ryan Hartman giving you the bird. SodaStick.com has you covered. Not only in just in hockey, though. You got Minnesota Vikings, Minnesota Twins, Minnesota Timberwolves, whatever your Minnesota sports team is, SodaStick has you covered with the best gear available. Don't forget to toss down Bardown Beauties at checkout for 15% off at SodaStick.com. Hello, everybody. We're back. Episode 141 in season four. We did it. Season four. Let's go. Whoop, whoop. I'm Jesse Pierce. She's Kirsten Kroll. He's producer Fred. Guys, what's going on? Welcome back. We had a week hiatus, which I don't know the last time we've collectively taken a week hiatus, but I liked it. I love it. Back, ready to go. Hockey's here. Season four. Bard on Beauties. Words. Whoop, whoop. Yeehaw. Ready to get this, a, this thing to, going. Before we do this. Okay. Off to a roaring so start. Kirsten, no, keep this in. We need in. banter. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We need banter. Well, sometimes I'm like, I don't know when Jesse's done talking, so I'll give it a pause. Like, I'm not going to interrupt Jesse. Interrupt so her. Interrupt then she just, okay. she just stares. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should chime in and actually use words now. Maybe this is the time. Keep this all in. This is all good. This is gold. This is content. Kirsten is my new co-host. We love Miss Alexis Pearson. She is pursuing some other avenues we couldn't be happier for. But Kirsten joined us a little bit toward the end of season three. She's here for, for the long haul until we fire her for either not engaging with us or not watching hockey movies tommy haynes is going to be joining us to talk specifically hockey movies but in case you missed it a couple episodes ago kirsten said she doesn't like movies in general we gave her a list of hockey movies to watch she had seen miracle hadn't seen mighty ducks hadn't seen slapshot kirsten how's our movie um list doing you know (laughs) i really wish i could tell you my intentions were very pure my intentions have been to watch Um, now the first, the problem was like, I was in the middle of moving. Now the problem is it's been two and a half weeks that I've been living in my new house and they haven't figured out how to install Wi-Fi. So I have nothing and my hotspot gets used up real quick. It's really convenient when you work from home too, (laughs) to not have Wi-Fi. I mean, it's, it's really just an optional thing. So, I mean, yeah, the movies, uh, haven't made a dent, but Maybe I'll go to the movies to watch Hockey Hockey Land before. Yes, Hockey Land in 63 different theaters. Again, Tommy Haynes will join us to talk more about that. Obviously, Kirsten, you're getting a little busy too because the NHL season is about to start. Um, super excited. Players have been practicing out at Tria Rink. Rookie camp starts this week. Real camp opens the following week, I believe. Haven't gotten those dates confirmed, but that sounds about right. I'm going with it. That's probably what we're going to do. Follow my Twitter, Jesse underscore Pierce, and you'll find out. Uh, Kirsten, they released the NHL schedule as well. Six games on TNT for the Minnesota Wild. Are you like a big schedule? Rah, rah, yay, let's get excited. I care. You just kind of like, eh, I know I'm going to be able to watch them no matter what. I I truly could care less about the schedule. Like, (laughs) As far as hockey goes, I mean, you're going to, there's dates where they're going to play against each team throughout the season. It's different for football because in the NFL, you're not playing every single team. So it's kind of a nice surprise. Like, Ooh, like who's playing where, which home site, like, what are we doing? Whereas the hockey season's so long, like you're going to encounter somebody at home and away at some point. So, I mean, to be honest, I don't really care too much about when the schedule comes out. And especially too, like I, I'm gonna be at every home game this year, so it's like yes. I'll, I'll just look at the schedule and see who's there when I'm there. You know, <laughs> exactly. There you go, exactly. And I should specify it's the broadcast schedule. My bad. The regular schedule came out. Yes, that in case somebody comes at me, don't don't chirp me for it. My apologies, but not really. Broadcast schedule. Uh, yeah. So that's gonna be exciting. I'm sure you guys will all be up in my mentions, mad because Bali Sports isn't carrying it on a night or two. Sorry, I can already tell you there are at least three of those TNT games that will be blacked out locally. So 
prepare yourself accordingly, please. And thank you. Um, yeah. And the reason I'm probably talking about the broadcast schedule is because there's nothing else going on in the Minnesota wild world, even really in the NHL world, it's been pretty quiet again. That's to be expected as they near camp here. I'm excited for the rookie development camp. That'll be our next up where hopefully we get some good peaks at some young guys, Marco Rossi. I know y'all are excited about that. I brought up some young guns to keep an eye out for. We will get to that in segment three in our up for debate, but uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into hockey land with Tommy Haynes. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back hockey land. Okay. I want you to think of the first time you took a big hit on the ice. Maybe it was a men's adult league. Maybe you were slammed into the boards in a big game. Or maybe it pulled a Jesse and just tripped over the blue line. Either way, it's happened. Boys hockey, girls hockey, it doesn't matter. We've all been there with our first big hits. And unfortunately, those hits can add up over time. Hockey players can end up with dizziness, headaches, and pain. And a large portion have even experienced concussion-like symptoms as a result. Thankfully, there's an answer. Dr. Tyler Stewart with Peak Vestibular Center specializes in the drug-free treatment of nagging concussion symptoms. Dr. Stewart formulated the 3A Brain Restoration Program, a comprehensive program to get to the root cause of your symptoms. He utilizes the latest technology and techniques to get you back on the path to your best life and back on the ice. If you're dealing with dizziness, headaches, or pain after taking one too many hits, contact Dr. Stewart for a complimentary consultation today. Go to dizzinesscare.com or call 715-690-2211 to schedule your complimentary consultation. We're back. Joining us now, Northland Films filmmaker and director of the latest and greatest hockey movie based out of Minnesota, Hockey Land, which is debuting all across the U.S., all across Minnesota here. Tommy Haynes. Tommy, how are you? Great. Hey, how you doing, Jesse? Good. I mean, Hockey Land. Let's start there. No better place to call Hockey Land than Minnesota. How did this uh, film come into fruition? I know it's not your first dabble in uh in movie making and in hockey movie making of all things, but uh, tell us a little bit about the premise of Hockey Land and, and the setup to it. Yeah, well, we uh, we made a film called Pond Hockey in 2008 and kind of doing that process, we met so many uh, NHLers and college players and a lot of them just talked about their growth, their days growing up playing uh, high school hockey in Minnesota, like Neil Broughton and, and all these guys, Maddie Henderson. And so we're like, man, it'd be so great to capture, you know, the spirit and essence of that. And so we started looking at teams, uh, mostly northern Minnesota teams from Warroad and Roseau down to like the Duluth area. Mm-hmm. And finally came across this Eveleth team that, you know, I'm sure you know, Jesse, that this is a team that has Mayasic and Mariucci and all these old storied programs. They won so yes. many state titles and that program was going to go away. They're going to merge with the neighboring school, Virginia. Mm-hmm. So we're like, let's film this now before this team's gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, Eveleth is just a remarkable, that's where the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame is, you guys. If you haven't been, go check that out. John Masich has his own seat at a local pub there as well, which I know yeah. many parents uh, have probably dabbled during hockey tournaments up in the cold. And fun fact, I have Pond Hockey on DVD. They gifted it to me while I was out at USA Hockey, so I'm a big fan uh, there as well. You had mentioned kind of capturing the essence of hockey here in Minnesota, and I have stressed it time and time again because I'm such an advocate for Minnesota hockey, but it really is unique here in the fact that kids want to stay here, play hockey with their association, play high school hockey. I mean, how much of that storytelling was really put into it and how much could you see the passion from all of these kids, coaches, parents, and everybody that's grown up in this culture? Yeah, we kind of have a, a show, don't tell kind of style observational filmmaking. And so we don't really don't want to have a bunch of talking heads just telling us like, hey, community is based model. All this is great. It was more so we just want to see that and see like the parents working the concession stands and flooding the rinks and like the kids just playing outdoor hockey, you know, from the morning till, till evening. So all of that was kind of key for us to show the, the flavor of, of Minnesota hockey. And yeah, that, that model is going away. I think nationally, you're not seeing it in Boston and, and Michigan that much anymore. Uh, this just playing for your local high school team. Uh, it's kind of a simple model, but it's it's getting more privatized and more into juniors style. And so it's really great that it still exists in Minnesota. And that's why you see when you go to the state tourney every year, all these towns, they shut the schools down and they just come to the, the, the X. It's, it's amazing. I love it. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Again, you guys all know it. You all live it. Uh, Blake Biondi is a, a gentleman that is prominently featured in the Hermantown Hawks. I did note that you wa- you had the game against Matamidi. I'm a Matamidi alum, so we don't need to talk about that necessarily. Ooh, but oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Right. Um, 
goes us anyway. Uh, just what a, what kind of guy is Blake? I've met him a, a couple times. I mean, he's just such a down to earth, genuine guy, but he's really an elite talent too. And this leader, and he's going to be a guy to really keep an eye on in the show this coming season or in the future here. Yeah. What kind of guy is he? I mean, amazing. I, I think all four guys we followed, I was just kind of shocked by how mature they were already at the age of 17 and, and Blake uh, by far the most, just because I think he was used to all the press and things from, you know, the age of 14 or 15, because he's a highly, you know, recruited player and scouted player. And so, yeah, but I, I got to know kind of the behind the scenes side of Blake and, you know, his family life and the friends he hangs out with and kind of what he does. He loves to hunt and fish like a lot of Northern Minnesota boys do. And, and just, uh, I, you know, I met him at the Hippodrome in Eveleth the year before when he was a junior and just uh, him and I just had, had a nice chemistry there. I was like, you know, I, I can tell this kid's not going to be kind of stagey on camera with me and, and try to kind of, you know, a lot of kids, I think when the camera comes around, they try to show off for the camera. And that was something Blake was doing. He was giving me pretty honest and authentic responses. So I was like, let's, let's get in with this kid. Let's see what he's all about. I love it. You know, Kirsten over here, my co-partner, isn't a movie fan. What would you tell her to get her into this? I mean, like you mentioned, it's more of a documentary style, I think, right? Yeah. Type of film versus a movie. And I love to chirp her about never watching movies. Kirsten, you're going to check this one out though, right? I was going to say, I knew this was coming. If Jesse didn't bring it up, I mean, I was going to ask, like, <laughs> give me your elevator pitch. Why should I watch this? But I mean, documentaries, I love a good documentary. I do watch those more frequently than just the typical movie. But yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. give us give us an elevator pitch for why people should watch. <laughs> well, right. Well, I mean, if, if you love high school hockey in Minnesota, I mean, this this is the movie for you, right? Like if it goes back to the Friday Night Lights series and, and like even way back to the Hoop Dreams uh, documentary, it just brings you inside the lives of those kids. And it's really about their experiences and what it's like to grow up playing high school hockey in Minnesota. And the film hasn't been done before. There's been other like TV series, but never a feature like doc about like the high school hockey experience here. And so I think Minnesotans are going to love it, especially high school hockey Minnesota fans. But hopefully nationally, this is what people want to come out and see. And, and it's, it almost has that kind of those kind of legs like like a hoop dreams would where, you know, no matter what sport kind of fan you are, you still are like, wow, this is an amazing culture going on in Minnesota. What's your background, Tommy? Are you a former hockey player? Tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, obviously, I would imagine hockey plays a role in some some sense for for yourself. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's this is a little bit of a selfish project for me because I. I grew up playing on the Iron Range, a little town called Mountain Iron. Okay, so yeah. outside ranks uh, from the age of five until uh, Did 12. you play with uh, Matt Niskanen? So I'm older than he is, I wish. Okay. But same but same rank, South yep. rank that Matt Niskanen played as well. Um, yeah. But then I, I, I kind of I moved to the Twin Cities when I was a teenager and kind of fell away from playing hockey, but then got big into pond hockey, and that's how that film started. But always wanted to kind of – visit you know my hometown of mountain iron and the iron range and see what it would have been like to play high school hockey up there and so a little bit of a, a selfish move on my part and just like curiosity i was like what is it like so, yeah did it bring you back were you kind of wishing like man i wish we could have stayed here or was there a lot of kind of that yeah. reminiscing up there when you were when you were filming this yeah i don't know yeah more reminiscing just uh i mean when you walk into the hip drum it's it is amazing banners hanging down giant like uh photos of mariucci and and Eichel and Mayasich in the, in the arena and just it just feels like hockey up there and yeah. our, our main guy uh, Elliot he lives a block from the rink you know he does the classic puts his you know stick over his shoulders and walks a block to the rink and that's how he plays he's a true rink rat and so that that's something that yeah I was like wow this would have been great to be up here to do this but at the same time it was really nice to experience it totally fresh and new for me and just coming in and just seeing what it's like now and, and a lot of stuff hasn't changed yeah kids are still shoveling rooftops kids are still <laughs> driving snowmobiles and hunting and fishing and a lot a lot of the culture is very similar so it was, it was really it was cool to see you know my mom is from the iron range she's from international falls and she has always told me she never wanted to consider duluth a part of the iron range now you said you oh, yeah. included duluth are you including duluth in part of the iron range then <laughs> no in fact a lot of media has been saying that like yeah. they're saying a, a clash of uh iron range titans <laughs> Uh, I think I think the Iron Rangers would be pretty upset seeing that stuff. It's yeah. just kind of like Twin Cities ignorance a little bit, but <laughs> no, they, they uh, Hermantown's not an Iron Range town. It was more so we wanted to have Hermantown because Eveleth had really been struggling. They've been on the decline right. for two decades, and Hermantown was just on this major ramp up, and they've been kind of a dynasty for the last mm -hmm. 10, 15 years. And so we wanted to show both kind of sides of things, like a struggling program and an elite program, and kind of both show how they're similar, but also how they're different, and 
and just and see that. And plus, we uh, truthfully we, we want a team to make the state tournament. Yeah. So those are probably the best two teams from Section Seven A. So yeah. we're like, oh, let's go with that gamble and just hope one makes it. Good, you saved yourself there because I do recall oh. every time you're going up 35 North, it literally says Duluth or Iron Range, and you're like, yeah, ah, that's not the same. <laughs> I know. Hopefully, we don't get in trouble for that. But no, we the, the Hockey Land crew is very aware that Hermantown's not part of the range. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. <laughs> what was your favorite part? I mean, I'm sure there are so many moments that really stick out to you. And again, without giving away those moments that were captured in the film itself, what were some of your favorite parts about producing and directing and creating this film that's now going to be enjoyed by everybody here in? Minnesota and beyond. Yeah, it's just, I mean, it's great meeting the families, right? Like that's, we got to intimately know all four families really well and, and the coaches and just see what their lives are like and just become good friends with them. I mean, we stay in touch. The, the film has been in the can for almost two years. And so, we, but we still stay in touch all the time. And, and, you know, it was amazing for these, and the parents are basically saying, oh yeah, go ahead, Tommy, and go film my 17 year old, you know, all day, all night long. And so that takes a lot of trust. And so, that that I think that was the thing that I, I take most from this project is just the relationships that I, I built with these families and they're amazing communities, right? Epic and Hermantown, but both very passionate. I know there's haters out there that don't don't love Hermantown. They think they recruit and double A and all that, but like these these are all just humans like we are. They're great people and uh, and uh, yeah, this uh, it was a great ride for me. Yeah. I, I'll, then, I'll stay moot about the Hermantown situation, but that's just this is effort, right? Class A. We sometimes you need to uncrown them, but anyway, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Kirsten. I was just going to say it. I mean, this project, it sounds like it's, it's definitely something I'm going to tune into. I'm going to first say that I will watch this, but is this, you know, having this one under your belt now, are you looking to maybe expand on this and feature different areas moving forward? Is that something you've thought about? Yeah. I, yeah. That's a good question. Um, I, I love doing hockey films, especially Minnesota hockey films. And so I'm always looking for ideas and we've been getting asked like, did you think about doing a female one like girls hockey? Yeah. And I, I, I would love to help with that. I mean, I'm, I'm a guy. And so it's just going to make things tricky as far as logistics with, within locker rooms and all that stuff. But mm -hmm. uh, I do think there is a, a story there for sure for female hockey. It's on just such a huge rise right now. Um, Lamro twins just got inducted into the U S hockey hall of fame. So I think that's a cool project. So if there's some people out there thinking about doing that, give me a call and we can discuss it. I probably can't direct that one though. I'll probably produce it, but I think that, <laughs> A great story yeah hey let us know we'll jump in we'll help yeah. we, got, we yeah. can handle a camera and some storytelling i'm sure i think that there would be go. kind of fun yeah we'll You're collaborate hired. yeah um so again tommy tell us where everybody can catch and find hockey land how can they access it is it coming out available for streaming at any time or we're starting in theaters what's the what's the deal there for the the premieres and debuts yeah, it is in 63 theaters across the state of Minnesota for the whole week, starting September 9th into the 16th. Um, so basically, uh, most communities in the state, there'll be something within 5, 10 miles of, of your hometown. So just go to HockeyLandMovie.com, and then we have a, a list of all the theaters that have it. You can find tickets that way. Awesome. You guys got to be sure to check it out. Even Kirsten, our resident non-movie watcher, is going to check it out. Tommy, she hasn't seen Slapshot or Mighty Ducks or, yeah. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, I didn't know this mm -hmm. was turning into a roast. I'm gonna, it's on the list. It's on yeah. the list. Oh, those are chirps I should have yeah. given you at our, our chirp uh, off, but you know, whatever. Yeah. You weren't thinking, Jesse. You weren't thinking. <laughs> watch, no, watch maybe maybe this past week, next week, I should say. I'll I'll find a theater. I'll go to Hockeyland website and find a theater nearby, get some popcorn <laughs> and make myself comfy. Slapshot's amazing. You gotta check it out. It's incredible. Yeah. Is that is that your list? top? Is that your top hockey movie? Like one that you haven't produced, directed, created? What's your top hockey movie? I've got, I think as a filmmaker now, that is my top one. I love that one. But as a kid growing up, I saw Youngblood when I was like, whatever, uh, you know, eight, nine, ten years old. Mm -hmm. So that one just is nostalgic for me. But then now I've seen that since. I think Slapshot's just a better film, yeah. That's fair. I know. I told her I put Youngblood on her list as well. I was like, I don't, I saw it when I was in college and I was kind of like, meh, it's all right. Yeah. Like. Yeah, yeah. I watch it because they were junior hockey players, right? And you have to try to right. follow that storyline. But well, yeah. awesome. Well, Tommy, thank you again so much. Super excited to check out Hockey Land. You guys go check it out. Let us know what you think. Uh, it's debuting again across 63 theaters here in Minnesota, starting the 9th through the 16th. So uh, Tommy, we'll be sure to keep in touch. Have you on again. Appreciate your time. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Jesse. Thanks, everybody. No problem. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Shout out to Tommy for joining us. I am glad that he clarified the range does not include Duluth. I don't know why. I have been taught from a young age that 
Duluth is not part of the range. It is up north, yes, and it is not part of the Twin Cities, but it is not part of the Iron Range. There's all these little inconsistencies. Kirsten, you're from Rochester. Do, what are your what what are like the pockets that you know about the state of Minnesota? Well, for one, I will say when I guess I can kind of pick up on what, how people get really annoyed when you like you say Duluth is part of the Iron Range, and you're like, yeah. no, it's not. It's not the same thing. Like, because something I can relate to is everyone that I have met, like when I went to school at St. Cloud State, people would be like, oh, you're from Rochester. Like, oh, that's just, that's outside the Twin Cities. And I'm like, not even close. <laughs> it's an hour and a half south of the Twin Cities. Like there is a huge distance there, bunch yeah. of farmland in between. So, I mean, I, I do make the yearly trip for sure, where I do a really long weekend up at a cabin on the North Shore, usually in Lutzen. Yeah. Um, I don't, is, is that the Iron? I don't know. I don't think no, so. No, that's just the North Shore. The Gunflint yeah. Trail. Sure. Yeah. The ramp, literally. <laughs> like I've I heard told, of it. I don't know where it is, though. Like I told Tommy, there's literally the sign when you're heading up 35, like to get to I Falls for me, I have to follow the Iron Range. And the sign splits. It's either Duluth or the Iron Range. And it just says Iron Range, which includes Cloquet, Virginia, Mount Iron, Grand Rapids. I think, yeah, Grand Rapids, Hibbing, all of those guys that way. And then Duluth that way. So I, I think it's funny. Also, I just like poking the bear. I know my mom also hates that everybody outside of the Twin Cities is called outstate and everything else is just called the cities and that just drives her nuts. She's like, we're part it's of the state out- too. People call it outstate? Outstate. It used to be like the outstate tournament, like for the high school hockey tournament it used to be called the outstate tournament if you weren't from the Twin Cities. Twin Cities, I think maybe we're a little, maybe we're a little nitpicky about who we include. Maybe we're a little inclusive. I'll be honest, Chris, I don't know anything about the South, so of Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> well we could dedicate a whole episode to it yeah. i can I'll i can educate work. jesse on south minnesota i i certainly south central minnesota southwest i know there's like marshall minnesota <laughs> out there and it's i don't enjoy southwest minnesota no offense to anyone listening. there you go all right i i had my feelings on duluth people came for me they'll probably come for you from southwest minnesota too so. i hope they do i would love to have somebody come for me for saying i don't like southwest minnesota don't chirp them man i'm telling you they'll give you a one-star <laughs> review uh <laughs> anyway let's wrap up this episode and our geography lesson here in minnesota uh this week i posed the question up for debate what young gun and i said young gun specifically just because i don't want to go necessarily full rookie i can't recall if matt boldy's considered a rookie or if sam Steele's considered a rookie so that's the other reason I'm saving myself Uh, But what young guy is going to really step up and make a big impact? Now, mind you, yes, the roster has not been set. So certainly these players might not make the team. I'm banking on they are, so bear with me here. But the players I included in said debate are Matt Boldy, Marco Rossi, and Sam Steele. Now, Sam Steele, for those of you that aren't familiar, um, was gifted to uh, the... No, not gifted. What did we... Bill Guerin picked him up from Anaheim. That's what happened. Uh, He had played a couple games there in the NHL, pretty, pretty dominant on the AHL level. And then you guys all know Bolds and Rossi. So Kirsten, what do you think? Who is going to make the biggest offensive impact between those three players? I mean, I feel somebody I could just say right off the bat that there's not too many question marks about because we saw a lot from him last year. The easy answer is Matt Boldy. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially, I think the only question mark is you know, once those lines become established and whatnot, like he, he's not a question mark. He's going to be on the wild roster, obviously. Right. But now that Kevin Fiala is gone, who is he paired up, Who not paired up with, but what line is he on? We know those two had a lot of chemistry on the ice. They were great together. Who can he stand alone now this season and yeah. be an impact player on his own? Or is there going to be somebody else on a line with him that he's going to find that same kind of firepower with that he did with Fiala? So mm-hmm. I think that's the only question mark. Everyone knows, loves Matt Boldy, especially after seeing what he was able to do last season and just getting started. So, I mean, I think the obvious answer here is Matt Boldy. I think with Rossi, especially, you know, coming back from the health issues he did have, I think there's some question marks there. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll we'll have to see. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think you're right. I think Boldy is the easy answer. I've been a fan of him since he was picked up in the draft. Uh, I showed you guys the receipts of that. I told you he was going to be good. And I think he hasn't seen his ceiling yet. I think he's just going to continue to get better and better. I mean, he's a hard worker, dedicated kid with a vision on the ice that I just love to watch. Now, in the interest of being different, I am really excited to see what Sam Steele can bring. I, I do have some 
question marks about Rossi for some reason. And I can't even fully explain myself, which I know doesn't usually help an argument, but there's just something about Rossi that doesn't have me all in on him yet. It just, it, I'm not there. I need to see more and I'm excited to see more when training camp opens, all of that good stuff. Um, but Sam Steele, I'm excited for, I think that's an interesting pickup cheap, like it for Bill Guerin, um, add some center depth. And I think I really liked the little glimpses I saw because he did suit for Anaheim when he played Minnesota here. Um, and I, I, you know, I liked the Anaheim team. I thought they had some good young things going there. So I'm excited to see Sam Steele too. I think he's my number two on that list. Um, I know y'all said Kalen Addison. Yes. You guys know, we love the mustache man excited to see what he can do. I also wanted to toss in Tyson Jost. I didn't know if he was considered young anymore because he had been in the league for so long, but I think he's a player that's going to take another step in his offensive impact because he's going to be given a bigger opportunity on a higher line. So that's why I didn't include him in that, but he gets an honorary mention, honorable mention rather for me. So that's going to do it for this week's episode. As always, we are bringing you new episodes every single week. Hockey is back, baby. Um, Shout out to our presenting sponsor, Soda Stick, SodaStick.com. Bar Down Beauty's code can get 15% off. Shout out to Talk North. Shout out to Grain Belt, a new sponsor for this season. Don't forget to circle your calendars for September 22nd in order to come watch us live at JL Beers in Burnsville at 7 p.m. Come hang with us. Special beers or special beers. There'll be special beers, but beer specials rather going on during the duration of that show. So we're super excited and grateful for them. Uh, Royal Credit Union, less fee, more free. Also, Peak Vestibular Center, where you can get all your help on concussions and more from Dr. Tyler Stewart. We love it. We like it. All that good stuff. Uh, yeah, more new things coming next week. We will also introduce you to the Let's Play Hockey High School Hockey Take, so be sure to stay tuned for that. As always, subscribe, rate, drop your comments, give us some love, share. You guys are the best. Um, yeah, have a great week. Bye. Near, 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 near.